what we're here doing with Harvesting Scholars is just making sure that our students know what to look for, because one of the things we do, we want to create well-rounded students and to help ensure that um, they are choosing the best fit college. And part of that is making sure that the college that they attend is safe. And we want, to, want it to feel as like home. We want them to know what to look for um, to make sure that they are in a safe environment when they're making those college selections. So I'm going to turn it over back over to you. I'm not sure um, if you have a specific format for how you will be um, leading this discussion. Uh, we have a few of our ladies on. There'll probably be a few others that join on in just a moment, but I am going to turn it over to you now and you can take it away. We're looking forward to this information. And ladies, make sure you take notes, ask questions. So if it's okay with you, uh, Chief and uh, Ms. Calhoun, I wanted to make it conversational. So if it's okay, I'll, I'll kind of just ask you some questions, Chief. Is that okay? That'll be fine. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, um, we do want to go ahead and get started. So um, for those who are with us, um, for our young people, I would ask um, if you have a question, unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, feel free to ask questions. This will we'll keep this very conversational. But if you're not asking questions, if you would mute yourself, I see everybody's muted now. But as people come on, just remind them to mute themselves uh, so that we can all hear well and we can all um, interact well. Um, so I want to I want to I want to pitch it to um, to Chief Horace so that he can introduce himself and tell us um, why why I asked him to get on or why I may have asked him to get on. So if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, Chief Horace, who your current role, um, things in your past and your training uh, that may be pertinent to our discussion for tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is David Horace and I am chief of police at Georgia Highlands College. We have five different campuses at Georgia Highlands, um, Cartersville, Rome, um, Marietta. Uh, we have two locations in Rome and Dallas, Georgia. Um, I've been in law enforcement 27 years now. I started my law enforcement career at Georgia State University in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I was there five years. And then I left Georgia State University after becoming a sergeant to move on to Columbus State University to be the assistant chief of police at Columbus State University in Columbus, Georgia. I did uh, five and a half years there and I left Columbus State University to work for the federal government for about two years. I was a special agent with the Social Security Administration Office of Inspector General's Office. And then after I left the Social Security Administration, I returned to campus law enforcement and was the chief of police at Virginia Union University. And I served there about three years. And prior to coming back to Georgia and being a chief at Georgia Highlands, I was the chief of police at Johnson C. Smith University. And I was there about five years. Um, so it's been a great experience. Um, I was looking back yesterday 20 of the 27 years I've been in a command position. Um, so wow. I was fortunate and blessed to um, be in leadership positions at a very early part in my career. Wow, wow. Well, we thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us, but we thank you for our ser your service. You've um, played a lot of different roles in, in protecting and keeping people safe. Um, so we thank you for your time. Um, so most of y'all may not know, or some of you may know, but um, in addition to the role that I play with Harvest and Scholars, I've also been in the electronic security industry for about 15 years. And so um, one day hoping to make uh, Chief Horace one of my customers, one of my customers. Actually, I think with Security 101, I think we did do some work together. But, um, but so I, I work with colleges, Kennesaw State. Um, work with West Georgia as it relates to electronic security, cameras, access control, mass notifications, and all those sorts of things. Um, so tonight, kind of you and I are going to just have a, a conversation and they're going to get to listen in um, about things. And we kind of tagged this. We kind of um, wanted to make this like a conversation. If, if we were talking to our niece or talking to our goddaughter or talking to our children as they're getting ready to go to college or, or begin to look at colleges, what are some of the things that might be important? Um, so I guess I wanted to I wanted to ask you to explain to us 
Um, we, so, you know, parents um, are oftentimes very concerned about, and rightfully so, about dropping their kids off. There's, there's some anxiety. I have um, two kids that have been to college, one still at home. And so there's a bit of anxiety. Um, and some people on here may have heard about the Cleary Act um, and, and, and about how to choose a safe school. So now some of you've already chosen a school, some of you getting ready to choose a school. How do you know if a school is safe? How, what, what would you tell your niece, tell your nephew? You brought up a great point talking about the Cleary Act. We are actually preparing the 2022 um, annual security report, which report the uh, most recent uh, three years of crime on college campuses. Uh, Jean Cleary was actually a young lady. This, the Cleary Act is named after Jean Cleary. She attended Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And uh, she was in her dorm room. Her roommate went out, didn't have her key. So uh, she left the door unlocked, open. So when she come back in, she'll be able to get in the room without disturbing her roommate. Um, but prior to her making it back in, an assailant got to the room and uh, sexually assaulted Jean Cleary and murdered her as well. And so her family went before Congress and um, they came up with the Cleary Act where colleges and universities across the country have to report all the crimes that happen on their campus. So parents and students can make an educated decision about if they want to attend that college or not based on the crime statistics and other events that happen on the campus. So the Cleary Act is very important to research. And if you go to the website of the college or university that you're interested in, you can click on the campus police department or either the public safety department. A lot of the colleges and universities call their police department a public safety department and click on the annual security report. Once you click on that annual security report, you will get the crime statistics for the most recent three years. Uh, so coming into this year, you're gonna get 2019, 2020, and 2021. Also in that annual security report, you will see what type of programs that the colleges and universities offer far as safety. Um, one of the things we do at Georgia Hollins College is we have um, fight to flight where we teach um, defensive tactics for women um, to fighting off if there was a sexual assault, how can they defend themselves and protect themselves if they find themselves in that event. Um, we also do alcohol awareness training. Uh, we do drugs training. We talk about drugs um, and you'll find that in your annual security report and policies. Also in that annual security report, it will mention how to report a crime, how to go about it. Um, and if you are sexually assaulted, it'll tell you how to go about that process and filing a report. Um, not taking a shower uh, because that's evidence that the uh, police officers could have. Um, keeping track of your clothes because there's forensic evidence that's in your clothes that can help us capture your assailant. Um, so Question. the Cleary Act is very important. Excellent. Okay, go ahead. So um, I'm Perry, hello, my name is Perry Smith and I attend Fort Valley State University. I am a freshman and I've been on campus um, Monday, made a week for me being on campus. And so this whole week at band camp and everything that I've been involved with, we've been talking about Title IX. And so I was yeah. wondering like, does Title IX go under the campus police thing, all that? Because they're really big on Title IX here because like every class I've been in, they've been stressing Title IX. And so I was wondering, is that all included in it too? Yes, uh, Title IX is also um, included. And when we talk about Title IX, Title IX came about for equity on college campuses and, and universities. Um, Title IX came about actually for sports. Um, for every male sport, there has to be a female sport. And so that's how Title IX began. And then after that, it started growing more. 
with Title IX. So now under Title IX, we have uh, sexual harassment, uh, sexual assault is also under Title IX and it has to be thoroughly investigated. So there's two type of investigations that will go on if there was a sexual assault on campus. You'll have the police side of the house and then you'll also have the student conduct side of the house. Um, and, and that will be a Title IX investigation. So Title IX is very important to um, the colleges and universities as well. And it has grown so much just from having equity in sports and scholarships for female applicants as uh, male athletes. Um, so it has really broadened the gamut. And if you don't have a Title IX program, colleges could you lose federal funding. Um, so it's very important. Yeah, Paris, thank you for that question. You're um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that, that in-depth answer. So uh, one thing I do wanna, I wanna piggyback and also segue. So the, the follow-up question was, you mentioned, if I understood you correctly, that the Clery Act is mandated reporting for all uh, incidents happening on campus. So like I mentioned earlier, um, that my daughter lives off campus and, and a lot of times parties or, or things may be going on off campus. Um, so our off campus, incidents reported through the Clery Act? Yes, um, long as it is within um, uh, 500 yards of the campus, uh, campus police jurisdiction is 500 yards from where any campus property is leased, owned, or operated. Um, there's also um, colleges abroad, uh, like the University of Georgia, they have a, a campus in France. And so the University of Georgia Police Department have to get the crime statistics from that area uh, to report it. And we have to do that as well. If it's within 500 yards of our jurisdiction, um, like my Cartersville campus, uh, I have to get the crime stats from the Bartow County Sheriff Department and share that in my Cleary report too, because it's in the surrounding area of my campus. Okay, thank you. Listen, this is some very rich information. If you guys have friend, uh, family or friends that could benefit from this, um, parents or you know grandparents, uncles, aunts, go ahead and text them, share this information. Uh, we wanna make uh, full use of this uh, valuable time that we're spending together. Um, so the kind of segue that I wanted to share, also, if you have questions, please don't uh, hesitate to raise your hand in the chat, type them in the chat if you're a little bashful or just stop me and we can um, hear your question. Um, the segue to that was open campuses versus closed campus. And, and, and I hope I have my terminology correct, but what I mean is like Georgia State that you mentioned earlier, Georgia State is, is disparaging buildings throughout uh, downtown Atlanta um, versus something like Shorter where there's a, a gate and you're in a, in a closed community. Um, can you share a little bit um, your thoughts on open campuses versus closed campus and why that may be something that parents and students wanna take in consideration? Um, yes, um, as you mentioned, Georgia State University is an open campus um, where the community could come on to the campus um, with ease. And your closed campuses tend to be like Spelman College. There's a fence around Spelman College uh, when I was chief of police at Virginia Union uh, University, we had a fence. And also in Charlotte, North Carolina, we had a fence um, around Johnson C. Smith University. And one thing about the fence is we controlled the access, who came on to the campus. Um, if you were a student and faculty and staff, you had to show your ID when you came through the booth. And we had the arms up during the day. Uh, so you could come onto campus and you had to present a college ID. Or if you were a visitor, so you signed in and we uh, got your name and number of the car you were driving and your license plate. So we controlled the access on a campus. And um, we call that crime prevention through an environmental design. Um, when you have a fence and have something in place, most people will tend not to come on campus and do that. 
things because they think I got to get back on the other side of the fence and I may not make it back. So it is definitely a deterrent. Um, and when you have open campus like Georgia State University, um, you have thousands of people coming through your campus on a daily basis um, because it's so transient. And normally when you do have transient foot traffic, um, sometimes going to see the steps in the college campus um, because they'll cut through the campus, uh, walk through a building, use the restroom, and then after they use the restroom, they go, well, maybe I can have a prime of opportunity, you know, walk past an office and don't see somebody in the office and see a cell phone sitting on the desk. Um, and they grab a cell phone and keep walking. Um, so open campuses have its uh, challenges. Um, you really have to be vigilant and visible. Um, when I work at Georgia State, and even at uh, Georgia Hollins, I make sure I tell my officers to be visible and be out patrolling because you are determined. You are the term crime that what actually happens when they see you visible and in control. And when it's one of those closed campuses, you sort of got the safety net of that fence up to assist you uh, with controlling on who's on your campus. Excuse me? Yes. It's like really fuzzy, but I don't know if it's like on my end because I did leave and it's like really like we were talking, it has like this fuzz and it doesn't, it sounds Yeah, weird. I'm, I'm hearing it as well, Chief. I'm not sure if you're losing connection, but it's, it is a little um, distorted. Let me try. How's that? That seems better. Is yeah, that, that better? seems better. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, we were talking about the open and closed campus. With the closed campus, you have that fence to assist you with controlling the access who is on your campus. Um, as opposed to the open campus, um, it's just transient. You have foot traffic coming through, vehicle traffic um, that you you um, can't monitor. That that is tough because it's a public property. Um, so I I found success more so on closed campuses as far as uh, crimes, um, particularly crimes against person. Um, because we controlled the access, who was on that campus, and we knew who was on that campus. Yeah. So, so for our audience, great question to ask, or, or great thing to understand as you're looking at prospective colleges, understanding if it's a closed versus open for the reasons that uh, Chief was sharing. Um, that that you know, and it doesn't mean that that you don't go to Georgia State. Maybe Georgia State has the program and has the the things that you want. But just understand that's going to be a total different environment. Um, I remember I did a, a, a college tour with a relative who was um, looking at Georgia State and who ended up going to Georgia State. Um, but the parents were not from the city of Atlanta, and and when we literally saw some of the um, the population that, without shelter um, sleeping right outside some of the. Uh, the classrooms and dormitories, it, it was it was an eye opening experience. So just just understand it and understand who you are and how you function, because some of us may function through that. Some of us that might be a huge distraction or deterrent. Right. Um, the other question I had as, as we're talking about choosing a safe school, we talked about the Cleary Act. Um, for those who are joining us late, uh, Chief Horace is going through um, the wealth of knowledge that he brings to the table and sharing some things with us. Um, so we talked through the Cleary Act. We've talked about the open campus versus the closed campus. I want to talk to you about in this day and age that we live in, how important is technology, right? So I share with the group that I work for a company that provides technology for colleges and K through 12. But how important is technology? So cameras, access control, um, you know, apps, um, the lifts. Live safe. Yes, live yeah. safe. Live safe app. How important is technology? If you were talking to your niece, talking to your nephew, they said, "I'm thinking about this school." How how much would you caution them about understanding what technology that school embraces? How important is technology? Technology is very important. Um, as you mentioned, they have the live safe app um, where you can report a crime to the police department um, without physically going to the police department. Um, also with that app, if you were walking to your car or to your residence hall, you could be on a phone with a friend or someone in a campus police department as you walk. 
Um, so technology is very important. Um, the Vigilant cameras. Um, so ask the police department when you visit the college and university. Um, I would like to see your annual security report so I can see the type of crimes that has happened on your campus. Ask them, do they have cameras? Um, ask, do they have the Live Safe app or RAID? Uh, there's, there's several different apps out there. Um, the uh, Vigilant cameras, um, awesome cameras, um, an awesome platform. Um, with the analytics that we could put in the camera system. If we were looking for someone who was wearing blue, we can put that in instead of researching hours of video looking for somebody, we can put in a description of that person that we're looking for and then the cameras will pull that up. We can pull that up from the cameras of that uh, specific person that we're looking for. The one thing I would say about technology, too, is don't get distracted. Um, everyone is on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and on the daily, as I walk across my campuses, um, I see students on their phone um, texting, checking emails or on TikTok. Be aware of your surroundings. Uh, be vigilant. I talked to some of my colleagues at uh, Georgia Tech University and a lot of their student population um, have been robbed um, and their cell phones been taken because they're paying attention to their cell phone and not aware of their surroundings. So um, you, you do want to leverage the technology to stay safe, but you also um, want to have that um, healthy balance so that you are vigilant of where you are. Um, walk with a purpose. Um, look like you know where you're going if, if you get lost. Um, walk with confidence, walk with your head up. And if you have to stop in a building just to get your bearings together, uh, stop in the building and get your bearings together um, because the bad guys are looking for people who's not paying attention, um, who's not vigilant, and, and who appears to be weak. Um, so walk with your head up, walk with your back straight. Um, first impressions are last in impressions. Wow, that, that was phenomenal. I really hope um, everybody is listening. I hope you're really paying attention um, because that was some valuable information. Um, my dad used to always tell us if we went to New York, we went to the big city, don't be looking up at the skyscrapers, right? Don't, don't, don't get, because they know you're a tourist. They know you're, you're mm -hmm. not from there because the people from there don't, don't have their neck, you know, stuck up looking up. Uh, there was a rapper back in the day, um, JT Money, who was talking, not good stuff, bad stuff, but he was talking about they would look for people with a map on the dashboard because they knew you, those were identifying marks that they would let people know that you don't know. So what you just shared was just such a wealth of knowledge that you walk with confidence. And if you need to get your bearings, step aside, step into a safe space, get your bearings. But when you're out there, because people are, predators are looking for prey. Predators yes. are looking for prey. That, that's some phenomenal stuff. Um, so there, there's, there's other technology as well. So we, we mentioned a couple things. What about mass notification? Are you guys currently using mass notification? Um, what are your thoughts about mass notification where they can push, uh, if there is an uh, incident that happens on campus, you can push notifications to um, the cell phones or to display boards and monitors, take over screens, that kind of stuff. Um, is that something that you guys are using or what's your thoughts about that? Yes, we use mass notification. We use Blackboard Connect and uh, we call it GHC Notify. So whenever there's inclement weather on a campus or we have an incident like um, three weeks ago, we had a bomb threat on one of our campuses and we was able to put that out through the mass notification system where everybody got it, a text message, a phone call and an email. And um, we told them that um, we had an incident on campus, a threat on campus that we were actively investigating and do not come to the campus. And then after our um, local law enforcement partners came to assist us in checking the campus and clearing the campus that there was no bomb or no device, we sent out a message that it was all clear and that we was returning to normal operations. It is a huge, 
huge um, ally to law enforcement where we can get information out to the masses where once once upon a time we didn't have that. And, so and it is it is huge. Is it an auto enroll? So if I'm a student at Georgia Highland, I'm automatically enrolled or do I, you know, to someone who's on here, Perry, who's there, she's been there a week. Is there something that she needs to do from your perspective? I know every school's different. Is there something she needs to do or is it something that typically is automatically enrolled? Um, it's different at different colleges and universities. When we were at Johnson, when I was at Johnson C. Smith University, if you enrolled in as, as a student, you were going to enroll in a notification. You didn't have a choice. Uh, but at Georgia Highlands, uh, you can opt in. Okay. You, okay. You can you can opt in and and get the information. Um, I had a mom call me. We had inclement weather. And she was in Los Angeles, which they're three hours behind us. And so when we sent the message out at five in the morning saying that the school was going to be closed due to inclement weather, the mom got it at two in the morning. And she said it woke her up out of her sleep and she was glad uh, that the message went out, but she's on the West Coast and was three hours behind. And if I could... Um, not send her messages about inclement weather, but about things that was of danger to the school. And unfortunately we can't do that. So I told her she either had to opt in or opt out um, because we can um, uh, disassociate the message with uh, weather and safe. And uh, she said, I get it. She said, but just keep me on and I, I just have to deal right. with it at, at uh, two o'clock in the morning. She said, because I like to know what's going on with my daughter being on the East Coast away from me. And, and, and that's guess... going to be my question um, for parents. Uh, do they have the option to opt in? I remember yeah. when our children were going through, um, we would get a message that would say, oh, there's a robbery on campus. Oh, there was a break in on campus. They were a little annoying. But yes. um, at the same time, we kept us informed. But um, I was just wondering if that's something that even going forward now, is that something that um, parents are, it's an option for parents. And if our students that are on this call, to make sure that you are um, including your parents so that they are also aware, your recommendation on that. Yes, I would definitely recommend that um, your parents opt in so they're getting the information in real time, just like you. And, and, and we, we give that option to the parents to opt in. And we do, we do have parents uh, opting into the system. Awesome. Uh, and, and I guess for those who are listening, my, my suggestion would be to deal with a little bit of annoyance in order to get it um, in the case of an emergency. Um, so listen, we, we've went through uh, the first portion of the part that I wanted to ask you about. I want to pause right here. Again, I want to encourage us if there are people that we need to uh, share this with, the people that you feel could benefit from this conversation, I want you to take a moment real quick to text them to, to you know, we're not on social media tonight, but we can share it later. But but text somebody, tell somebody um, what a great conversation we're having. Also, if you have any questions, I want to pause right now. Uh, check the chat. For any questions, raise your hand or just, uh, you know, unmute yourself if you have any questions for, uh, for Chief. Okay, so we're going to move on to the, I'm sorry. You're Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay so we're going to move on to the next section. Um, the next section I want to talk about, all right, so God forbid um, something, something bad does happen. What, what do I need to remember? Here again, Chief, you're talking to your niece, you're talking to your nephew. If you would say, hey, look, here's the three things I need you to remember in the case of an emergency, what would those three things be? Um, and, and, and I guess let's, 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 let's put the, you know, let's put the elephant out uh, or call out the elephant in the room. Uh, everybody immediately goes to active shooter. And, and I don't have the statistics in front of me, but the statistics for active shooters are very low. Um, although we're hearing way too many and I'm not making light of it and I, and I do take it very seriously, but it's much more likely that statistically that um, some of the young people on here would encounter somebody breaking into their car, breaking into something than they are to be part of an active shooter experience. But so keeping that in mind that we have the, the extreme worst, but then also the day to day, what are three or five things you would want to tell a young person to keep in mind if, um, if there is an emergency? 
The first thing I would share is pre-active shooter. There are so many signposts that goes on that we miss. If someone's talking about violence, if someone talking about guns, if someone's posting on Instagram with guns, TikTok, Facebook, let campus police know. Uh, let the local police know. If you see something, say something. Um, what we are finding out with these shooters um, after we arrest them and interview them, some of the things they are saying is that they were bullied, uh, they were picked on, they were talked to in any kind of way. So I would share with everyone on this call, um, remember to be kind. We are in a tough situation today dealing with the pandemic, um, dealing with folks who may have lost jobs because of the pandemic, um, inflation. And so a lot of us are going through a lot of things. So just remember to be kind. And remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And then if you see something, say something. If you see a text message come across our posting and it's talking about balance and shooting, let somebody know so it could get on law enforcement's radar before the shooting and we can investigate. Um, now, however, if there's a shooting on campus, um, one of the things that we talk about and that the Department of Homeland Security teaches us is run, hide, and fight. Those are the three options, run, hide, and fight. Now that's gonna be situational. If the shooter is upon you, you may not have a chance to run in a different direction away from the shooter. So then you're going to have to look for a place that maybe you could barricade yourself in and shelter in place or, you know, lock yourself in. If that's not available, then your option is going to have to be to fight. And most of us tend not to be confrontational. Um, and so when we have to fight, a lot of people say, you know, I, I couldn't imagine hurting them, Chief, you know, but that person is going to cause harm to you, seriously bodily harm to you. So I encourage you, if you have to fight, be as violent as possible um, so you can get away, um, so you can stop the threat. Um, because we finding that these shooters don't have in mind what they're going to do to you. There's no remorse for them. And so if you have to fight, be as violent as possible and you can do it. You are strong to take care of yourself. You can do it. Uh, when we do this training, um, at the end of the training, we have so many people come up to us and say, I didn't think I had it in me. Uh, that I could stand up because we'll actually simulate a active shooter and we'll have students join in um, and, and, and we'll do role playing. And so when we go through a scenario to see the confidence of those students from the beginning of the scenario to the end, um, you can do it. You can defend yourself. Be aware of your surroundings. Know where the exits are when you at a movie theater when you're at a restaurant, when you're at the mall, when you're at Walmart, know where the different exits are. We are trained to exit the same way we came in, right? For the most part, we go into the mall, we're gonna go back out that door because our car is parked in the parking lot right there, right? But there are always more exits and entrances than that one. There was a nightclub up in New York and they had um, some fireworks inside of the uh, club and the club caught on fire. Everybody tried to go back out of the same door they came in and 112 people lost their life. And most of them was trampled because they tried to go out of that door where they came in and there were six other entrances in that club that they could have got out. 
Know your surroundings, very important. Know your surroundings, look for the exit signs. You know, um, when I go to uh, a restaurant, uh, one thing I look for is another way to get out if I have to, and I never sit with my back to the door. I'm always watching who's coming into the restaurant. When you at a movie theater, look for the exit signs just in case it's a fire or if it's an active shooter in a theater, um, where can you escape to? Um, plan your escape route. Um, and it's unfortunate we have to do that thing and have to think about these things, but plan your escape route. Um, if you're attending a movie theater, or you at Six Flags or taking in a concert downtown Atlanta, um, what if? Ask yourself, what if this happened? And then how would I respond? I think that's important to do. Absolutely, absolutely. We're starting to get a little bit um, feedback. I'm not sure. We heard you fine, but it was just how it started last time. So I want to make you aware of that. Um, kind of jumping ahead to another point, but I think it's a great segue. Um, and you've been kind of dropping breadcrumbs the whole time about this. But there's there's a big there's there's a big thing going on in the room right now. Everybody's want they want to know about the parties, and I think this is great. I think this is a great time to talk about it because, um, you know, I, 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 so so I, I'll be transparent here. You know, uh, you know, ten years ago I would have been like, no kid goes to any party. Um, but I but I, I grew up and I understood that kids are going to go to parties and there, there are two kinds of parties, right? There, there, there are school parties and then there's these off campus unsanctioned parties. But but I think it's a great time to talk about assessing unsafe situations. So if you decide to go to a party, whether it's a school sanctioned party or another party, um, I think it's a great time to talk about where you're where you're at right now. Uh, you know, how do I get out of this? Where am I going? How do I, you know, how do I get back to my dorm if my ride leaves me? All sorts of things. Can you talk about your, from your perspective, about parties? Because I know they want, that's all they want to hear about. They want to hear about parties. Yeah, they want to hear about those good old parties, right? The fraternities and sororities and having parties. Um, and I think that's part of your college experience and your college life. Um, so enjoy it. But we want you to enjoy it by being safe. I always encourage the buddy system. Know who you partying with. Know who you are partying with. Um, if you know a person that like to get into fights all the time, you may not want to go to a party with that person because nine times out of 10, it's probably going to be a fight. Um, if you're underage, you shouldn't be drinking anyway because that's against the law. But if you are of age and you can and you're drinking, um, be responsible with your drinking. Have a designated driver um, that's going to drive and not drink so you all could get back safe. But watch out for one another. When I was at um, Johnson C. Smith University, we had a party and it was a group of girls. One of the girls got drunk. So they took her back to the dorm room and didn't put her in a the room. They laid her on a couch in the common area, in the hallway. And then they went back to the party. Um, and then we got a call that there was a drunk female student in the uh, hall, in the lobby area of one of the residence halls. Thank God that she wasn't sexually assaulted or taken advantage of. Um, but they just left her. And so I remember talking to her friends and saying, why would you just leave her? You know, they said, well, we wanted to go to the party, you know, and she got drunk. And I was like, but you don't leave her behind. You know, you, you guys could have left somebody with her and made sure she got to a dorm room and was safe. You just laid her on a couch in the lobby area and people were coming and going, you know, in residence hall. And this was a co-ed residence hall. So a young man could have came and took advantage of her. Um, but look out for one another. Be your brother's keeper. Be your sister's keeper. It's important that you do that. And then if you're drinking too, I would encourage you to 
have somebody watch your drink if you're going to go out on the dance floor and dance with somebody have a person to watch your drink um because it's still very popular for the uh date rape drug where people slip something in your drug uh rohypnol and um it can inca incapacitate you and then uh you're sexually assaulted um so just just be careful you can party and still be safe and Absolutely. the buddy system is the most important one. Absolutely. I've got a question. Go ahead. Well, I, it's not really a question. I have something to add. It's like what you're talking about with the parties and things. Because like being on campus, there are parties. And like I've experienced that myself. Like the first day we came here, there was already a party. And so like um, at the end of band count, we had an end of band party. And so I went with my friends. And so the upperclassmen here at Fort Valley, they're really sweet. And that's like one thing I love about Fort Valley. If y'all are trying to decide what school to go to or something like that, the upperclassmen and just the, the aspect of the campus is really nice here. And so like, I went to my first party and it just felt like, I, I, I don't want to, it felt like God was watching over me because of the fact, like, how much they care about you. Like, the whole time they're like, Perry's, are you okay? Like, it was me and my other freshman friend. They were like, Perry's, are you okay? Perry's, are you fine? We always had each other. It was like, when we walked across the street, it was like, everybody hold each other's hands. Like, it was like really caring for you. And my friend and band, like, I left my lanyard, my ID card. And so I left it all the way at the um, stadium. And I was like, dang, I have to walk all the way across this campus to go get my ID card. And then the band teacher was like, um, we don't go anywhere alone in this band. And so like, he designated like a person, a buddy, a buddy for me. And so it's, it might, you might be like, like me when I first was like, before I even came to school, I was like, dang, who's going to do that? Who wants to, who will actually do that for me? But there are people who would do that. There's people who want you to be safe. So don't feel like going to school or being, or when you go off to school that you won't have anyone to be able to take care of you. Like you have someone to care, take care of you at home, but there is, there are going to be people because I was doubting myself. I was like, dang, I don't know if I'm gonna find true friends, but you really do. You do find people who want to take care of you and care for your safety because that's all that matters. Nobody wants to wake up and be in the grave. That's just the truth. That's just the fact. No one wants to wake up and be like that. So. Don't feel like you don't have anyone to to be able to like confide in or be able to like protect you or any, however you want to say it. Just don't feel like that because there are people and these campuses, at least for where I am, for Fort Valley, there's a part of Georgia system too. Fort Valley, they take care of these students. They take care of us. So like, don't feel like that. People are here for you. Any school you go to, just be able, be aware, just like you do in Cartersville or wherever you're from, just be aware of the people you're around and just make sure you know those are true people because people are envious. People really are envious of people. And so just be aware of things like that, but don't be scared. Don't be scared about it either. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. I just want to add that. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. We appreciate that. Um, and anyone else who, to Paris's point, maybe not a question, but a comment, um, this is an open conversation. So if you have something, please uh, do like Perry said and stop us. Um, so so we, we appreciate that. And I think that that her sentiment also follows with the confidence statement that Chief was sharing with us. That part of, you know, no, we're, we're, we're telling you a lot of information, but our intent is not to scare you, it's to make you aware but also you, you do need to be confident and you need to exude that confidence when you're out because there are predators um, and predators look for prey. Predators look for prey. Um, so, so to that, all right, so parties, but then um, dating, dating, right? Um, so what, what, what are your thoughts about dating? Because we, you know, the term date rape, right? Date rape. It implies that someone was, in, you know, started one way and it went another way, right? It started off as uh, con consenting to go out or to spend time with someone, but somehow, some way, it went, um, it went awry. Uh, what, what are some some nuggets? What are some thoughts that that um, that you would share about that? I would say um, when you're dating, make sure you get to know that person. Um, when I was at uh, Johnson C. Smith University, um, and this may predate a lot of you guys, but in, in 
Carlos, you may remember this, but it was a football player from the Carolina Panthers, uh, defensive end, and uh, Greg Hardy. Okay. And he dated this uh, young lady. And uh, he was um, abusive to her. There was some dating violence going on. And uh, so we got her to come to the campus and speak to some young ladies. And one of the things that she shared with us is that he bought her clothes, bought her cell phone. And she remember thinking, oh, I got this great guy, professional football player. He loves me. He's buying my cell, uh, pay for my cell phone bill. I got an iPhone. But what comes along with that is he has control. The cell phone is in his name. So he can get the call log of who's calling you. He can get the text messages of who's texting you. So it's coming from a position of control and not a position of him being your boo and taking care of you. But he's coming at you with a position of control. Um, if a person start yelling at you, it's going to escalate to pushing. And then it's going to ele elevate to hitting. So be aware of those signs. If, if a young man or young lady is yelling and cursing at you um, for no reason and you always arguing, let that be a signpost that there could be violence in the near future uh, with dating. We always have these warning signs that we don't pay attention to. And then when we think back on it, we go, oh, wow, that did happen. Or he did say that, or she did say that. Um, get to know these people, meet in public places, meet at a bowling alley, um, meet at the food court where there's a lot of people around. Um, and before you just go straight to a person's um, apartment or have them in your dorm room without getting to know them, um, meet them in a public place. Uh, I encourage that. We had a young lady when I was at uh, Johnson C. Smith. She met this guy at the mall, immediately brought, her, brought him back to her dorm. And then he ended up staying like a week and a half. And her roommates called us and say, hey, this guy is in our apartment. She goes off to class. He's still in the apartment and we're scared. She didn't know this guy. So she not only put herself at risk, but she put her roommates at risk as well. Get to know these uh, folks. And when you go on the first date and they say, hey, I'll come pick you up, you know, let me know where you, you know, maybe uh, go somewhere on campus in the food court area or the student union um, before you start getting in cars with people before you know them. Um, also, I would share let your roommate know or your parents know. Don't forget, we all are grown, but people still love us and care about us. Let somebody know who you're going out with. You know, um, what were you wearing? Um, if you did get in the car with them, what was the type, what type of car was it? You know, who are we looking for? Uh, what's their real name? A lot of people give you a nickname. Hey, I'm Tank. Well, Tank, I need to know your government name so I can share that with some other people, you know, um, ask them, you know, now I know you got a government name, uh, you know, I know, uh, you know, we know we tank, it's a hundred people out there in the city with the name Tank. We, right. we, we, we want to know who we looking for, which Tank we looking for specifically. Um, so, yes. Get to know a person publicly, in public, um, before you start putting, uh, going in separate places because a lot of times it can turn ill real fast and you put yourself in a dangerous situation. A lot of things we have going on is human trafficking. And Atlanta is one of the leading spots internationally, not only in the United States, but Atlanta is one of the hot spots internationally, Atlanta, New York. Paris, internationally, where these guys are uh, sex trafficking uh, young ladies. And again, it starts off with, I get your hair done, I get your nails done, I get you a cell phone, I'll buy you the latest, the latest clothes, the, the latest fad. 
and then you hooked in. Um, and again, we see these warning signs before it gets bad. So pay attention to the warning signs. Be vigilant. Pay attention to the attitudes, the way they talk to you. Uh, like I say, pay attention if they posing with guns and and knives on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. That's probably not a person you want to date. Great stuff. Great stuff. I am getting um, the times almost up. So I want to do this. I want to pivot. I had a little bit more, um, but but I think I think the right thing to do with the remaining time is to open it up for questions and answers. Uh, so Q and A, real quick. Um, anything. Um, we we we've been blessed tremendously to have Chief Horace with us. So um, I want to I want to give you uh, the opportunity as it relates to safety or question you've always I wanted to ask, um, anything, the floor is open uh, for the time that we have remaining. Any, any questions, any comments, anything you've always wanted to ask, anything, maybe it sounds a little bit silly, but you just wanna get clarity on, um, the, the, the chat is open or you can, you can unmute yourself and ask questions. There was one question in the chat about, um, fraternity, sororities, initiations. Are there any policies about hazing or anything like that? Um, or are they kind of universal across all campuses in terms of like what the um, campus police department will allow, how they will interact? Or can you speak to that at all? Yes. Um, most of your colleges and university has a uh, anti-hazing policy on the college and the university on a campus. But in Georgia, um, there is a hazing law. So if you are hazing, um, you can be charged with hazing. Um, when I worked at Johnson C. Smith, there was a young man pledging Omega Psi Phi fraternity and his father was a member. So he called his dad and said, hey dad, they're paddling me. And when I went to the bathroom, there was blood in my urine. Uh, I think I'm hurt. So his dad spoke with the brothers via phone and say, hey, you know, there was blood in his urine when he used the bathroom. So could y'all give him a break? And so after the dad hung up with him, they paddled him even more because his father called. And so his father flew in. He was living in Dallas, Texas. He flew in from Dallas, Texas to Charlotte, North Carolina like six o'clock that morning and he and I met. And with him being a member of um, Omega Psi Phi fraternity, he was able to go to their website because he was a member, pull up the chapter for Johnson C. Smith University. And I had his son with me and I said, um, I need you to identify all the young men that paddled you and hit you. And uh, he did and uh, I charged him with hazing. We arrested him and charged him with hazing. Um, a lot of people think about physical hazing is the paddling, um, but there's also mental hazing um, that you need to be careful of. And a lot of these fraternities and sororities will say, if you allow yourself to be hazed, you're part of the problem too, and they won't bring you into membership. Um, the fraternities and sororities have um, changed the haze, and it's a lot less going on as far as the physical hazing goes on as it did prior um, because they changed their initiation uh, fees. They call it the intake process now. And uh, I think that's helpful. Uh, it cut down on a lot of that brutality that was going on. But yes, you can physically be charged with hazing if it's on that uh, state law in that particular state that you're going to school. So Fort Valley is against the law in Georgia as well as against the law on that campus. And tell somebody, tell somebody if it's going on, let somebody know you're not on an island by yourself. Chief, when do I call 911 versus calling campus police? That's a good question. Um, excellent question. Most of the time we are programmed to dial 911, right? Mm -hmm. Because the campus police number is going to be 10 digits. You know, and so I would suggest in an emergency, uh, if there's a fight or if there's a shooting, uh, you want to call 911. 
because 911 is going to route back to your campus police department and, yeah. and dispatch yeah. and let them know. We just got a call from your campus. They say that it's a fight going on in the student union or there was a shooting in the residence hall area. Mm -hmm. So um, dial 911, that's the universal uh, number to call. You remember that instead of trying to remember the 10 digit to your college or campus uh, campus police department, because it's going to get routed to the campus police department as well. Thank you. And if Any you got a locked out, yeah, if you're locked out of your room, then call campus police. And also, I would say um, program it in your phone so that you have it on speed dial. Um, oftentimes, you can get your keys in the room and lock so if you have a, a need to get in your room uh call campus police or you lock your keys in your car um some police departments still offer a service of using a slim gym to get you in your car but if it's a fight or shooting um if you collapse call 911 it'll get routed to the college and university dispatch center All right, any other questions? If not, I think our time's about up. We'll turn There is one more question. Okay. Um, are campus police required to be armed with guns or tasers? How prepared are they to protect our children? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, and there's two questions to that. If they are sworn police officers, they have to attend a police academy. Um, the police academy in Georgia is an 11 week police academy. And our officers have to um, go through the police academy to become a certified police officer in the state of Georgia. Um, the police academy is just like municipal police, just like the city of Atlanta or the city of Cartersville. And then you do have um, non sworn officers or third party security company that often supplement the staff of police officers. And they are not trained how to handle a firearm uh, or to de-escalate a situation as campus police are. Um, but we do that at college and campus. I use dynamic security to supplement my staff. And what I have to find myself doing is to, is to train those officers the way I train my police officers. And don't leave it up to the security company to do it. Um, so, so and I have training all my officers, I include those security officers, so they, so they are just, just as up to speed as my police officers. We're starting to lose your audio again. How about now? You're back, you're good. Okay, yes, um, I train the security officers with my police officers, so we all on one accord and up to speed. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm gonna turn it back over to the hands of um, our fearless leader and Ms. Gloria. Um, again, we wanna thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for just a wealth of knowledge. Um, the only, only thing we wish is that more people could have heard the great information that you have shared. Um, but we'll be in contact with you about future sessions and conversations. I love it. I thank you for having me. Um, it's important to protect our students and our sons and daughters because they truly are the next leaders. And, um, and it's truly important. So thank you for having me.